Welcome to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for joining us today. Today we are in Lancaster County, just next door to Chester County where I work. We've been traveling the country looking at all kinds of fire stations. Today we're going to look at the Lafayette Fire Station. Let's go take a look what they have. We're gonna be meeting up with their chief. Ooh, check this out. Morning. I'm Dave Keens, I'm the fire chief here at Lafayette. Glad to have you with us today for uh, Heroes Next Door. Yeah, thank and, you for uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to give you a tour and show us your, show, us, show you our station. This is a fairly new building uh, from what I understood, is that correct? That is correct. We're, we've been here about 11 years now. So uh, we used to be down on the highway, uh, Lincoln Highway. It was a challenge for us to back off the highway and it actually became unsafe. So we looked into uh, building a station up here on the hill. We had already owned the land and uh, you see what you're gonna see today. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. The other thing that really caught my eye uh, was that you guys don't traditionally have red fire truck. So we've been here uh, in existence since 1943. So in 1949, I believe it was, that we uh, ordered our first fire truck, which was right here. This will be the 1949 Chevrolet. Woo. And uh, we ordered it as red, as you a red fire red. truck. Okay. And this is what it came in as. It came in as an orange fire truck. So we decided to keep, keep the orange uh, color scheme. So I love the fact that you have it as a showpiece. And did you originally design this to have this on the front of the building as a uh, museum kind of thing? Uh, no, actually, the uh, after we had the service here, it served in a local uh, uh, Armstrong uh, as, as a uh, on-site plant fire apparatus, and then it was sold to a private collector. Uh, when we first designed the building, this was the front of the building, and uh, one day when we were under construction, we noticed that this unit was for sale uh, sitting alongside the road in Quarryville, Pennsylvania. Okay. So our members got together, we all chipped in, and we purchased it for, I believe it was about $6,000. We purchased it, and then we had some local uh, folks that, that actually restored the paint, restored the motor, and um, <clears throat> up until about six months ago, it was actually uh, drivable on the road. Um, it, it does have some brake issues right now, so we are we are holding off on taking it off site. Okay, well, for, for 1949, that's not bad. It's absolutely beautiful. Whoever did that did a great job. So this is our museum area, the front of the building here, and it was built specifically for this truck. It was a real a real good add-on uh, right. for us. I tell you, this is one of the first places that the people come and, and when they come into the station and they see this is our old patch um, that we have on the floor here. I see you got some of your old history and some of the old apparatus up on the wall. Yes, and a lot of our awards that, w that you'll see in the trophy cases. The trophy cases uh, will, will be full of the uh, awards that we've collected over the years. Uh, there's some old firefighting history and, and uh, firefighter buffs. Some of our personnel awards, uh, some of our lifetime members oh, um, okay. are on the board here. Uh, we have some photo shots here. This is when President Bush visited the area. We actually were the uh, fire standby crew for uh, when President's chopper came into the area. The old signage at the top, that was that was on our old firehouse. It was, it was inside the engine bay as identification. So as we move through here, uh, you'll see our original charter hanging on the wall. And then of course we have some fire memorabilia from over time from Lafayette some old pictures, some, some incidents, just some old equipment that we kind of showcase here. A lot of it has Lafayette uh, on it and some of it does not. Yeah, so uh, I would not necessarily call it old, I call it historic. This okay. is where our roots are formed, you know, the companies that go have to have a foundation and with the new generations that's coming about, they tend to forget about what where we all started. So having a display that does, you know, show some of our historic, you know, clothing and our helmets and, and gears and some incidents makes a real big difference for those new guys coming in. Now, this is our communications or what we call the comm room for short. Okay. Any kind of an activity that's going on as far as the crew or the staffing go. Um, we run about 600 calls a year here. Uh, that's on an average. Uh, we do provide fire and uh, rescue and EMS. Our EMS portion is basically for pedestrian struck, cardiac arrest, lift assist. Okay. So other than that, uh, our staffing here is probably about 60%. 
65 members, 65, 68 members. I would say half of those are firefighters and half of those are administrative type okay. members where they just provide support as an associate member. Are you a volunteer service? Or are you a full paid service? We are 100% volunteer. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so with the volunteers, do they stay here in the station during their shifts or do they respond from home? How does that work? We are a combination. So we are a home responder. We do have some live-ins and then we also run what we call a duty crew program here, which allows uh, people from other fire companies who are less busier than we are to come here and provide us with their services and time. So on Saturdays, you will see uh, people that, that come from other area fire companies that come here and to support us. So it is, we're kind of a uh, spearheaded at in, in the county here as far as allowing the duty crew. Uh, our live-in program, we have enough room for live-ins for four personnel. Wow. We only have two right now. Okay. Our current membership are allowed to bunk in uh, for a maximum of three days at a time. That's awesome. So, is this your coverage area back here? This this is our coverage area. This is the different box alarms. Okay. So this is our coverage area. We support East Lampeter Peter Township and this is Lancaster Township. We border Lancaster City, which is a career department, and then Manheim Township, uh, which is, is a combination department. Uh, I think we actually did a video the, in Manheim. Borders us to the north. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Everything else to the east of us is, is volunteer um, until we get down to the Chester County line. Okay. This is awesome. Where are we going next? Uh, there are four uh, fire companies in East Lampeter Township. We are one of the four in East Lampeter Township that okay. support the support the community. Um, we just are, we are the closest to the city, so we have we are what we call a metro department in my terms. Yeah. So we are we are the busiest. So you have a combination of residents and commercial and. What do you normally run in your area? Okay, from the Lancaster City side all the way down what we call the Strip, which is the Lincoln Highway Corridor, mm -hmm. which we have all kinds of infrastructure, anything from Dutch Wonderland, which is the amusement park. We have the shopping area, which is the outlets. We have all kinds of restaurants. We have residential. We have uh, Greenfield Industrial Park, and there's always new construction going on too. We're actually adding about a thousand apartment units to the township, uh, 400 down on the, the um, Rockville Square and another 650 over at the end of Greenfield North, they call it Greenfield North. So the township is expanding, so our, our services, you know, are, are forecasted to increase. Um, this is our, our boardroom. It doubles as an emergency operations room. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but the tables are smaller. They're all split up in case we were having a major incident where we need to have police, fire, EMS, and we need to have a central uh, operations center. These tables push out to the walls. All the chairs flip around and we can have multiple stations in here for people to bring in their laptops, set up, you can hook up telephones, whatever you need to do. And now everybody uses a cell phone nowadays. But yes, we are equipped to have an emergency operations center, spread the tables out, and to have a lot of uh, different agencies working out of this room. So it doubles as a boardroom and emergency operations center. That's a really good trick of the trade having a boardroom not with that big massive table but it, you can function as a big table but you spread it out i don't think i've ever seen that before most of the boardrooms that we've gone to have that singular you know firehouse table which are beautiful but it's one function and you you guys you know are thinking ahead of the game okay so this is actually the slowest part of our firehouse we're leaving to come into the biggest busiest part of our firehouse and this is the day room okay, okay. in the day room you can see we have this massive table here this is where all the food comes out this is where we solve the world's problem to see a run board up on the wall um, we have our, our i am responding we'll see who's staffing the station at any time and then we also have our uh, our communications boards where we post anything that's uh, that's relevant you know whether we need crews signed up to go somewhere or um if we have an event basically going on right this is the wall here has all of our mailboxes on it love the table did you guys end up making this in-house did you have this made how did this work because this is one of the top notch ones that i've seen so far we have a firefighter an amish kid and uh he made this Woo. And since he's made this one, we've, he's made a few. Yeah. So yeah, he did an excellent job. He might have a career in making fire tables. <laughs> did an excellent job. Um, this is our general office. Basically, this is where the secretary sits, any fire reports that are getting done, um, any kind of fundraising, that kind of thing. It all happens in here. They, they take care of the mail in the room here. Um, general office yeah well you have to have a good administration to make any paid or volunteer company really run without that kind of you know 
support from behind, it's very hard to get the trucks out of the door. Fire chief's office here. All right, fire so chief. this is your office, right? Fire chief and line officer's okay. office, yes. So basically the fire chief sits in here and line officers meet in here occasionally and, and we're trying to also solve the world's problems here. <laughs> I gotcha. How many line officers do you guys have? Uh, we actually have six right now. And then we have a fire police corps also. So we have a captain and lieutenant on our fire police corps. Okay. But as far as we run with two lieutenants, two captains and two chiefs. Okay. Now um, you talk about fire police. Many of our viewers don't know what fire police is. Can you explain that as we go along? Okay. So a fire policeman, basically he does traffic control in our incidents. Um, he keeps us safe on the scenes. So they respond in their personal vehicles and uh, they get out the cones, they put out the flares and they direct the traffic around the incident scene. Okay. So they are a traffic buffer basically uh, 600 feet away and uh, they, they try and keep us safe. Yeah, so pretty much a safety officer almost. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. Okay. Um, this is our president's office. So okay. I want to call this the administration too. So if this was the, the, the uh, president and the vice president sit here, and then we have the chief and the deputy and the line officers. And then on the end, we ha finally had the um, the general office. And then as we move down this way, uh, we end up going into the kitchen. Um, our kitchen basically is just uh, for our livings. And uh, whenever we have our meetings, we, we will have food in here and, and prep. And of course, then we can pass it out through here to, right. our, to our social hall. It's a nice, good kitchen. It's, it's not a, a huge industrial kitchen, but it'll serve its purpose. You have your stove, you got a couple different refrigerators, plenty of cabinetry for everybody. Yes, we used to include it into our rental program until we went with the live-in program. So we took it off of our rental program. Okay. So it's just for firefighters now. This is our social hall. We have pretty much activity going on in here. The, the rental business is pretty, uh, pretty active. Uh, this room holds 120 personnel. This is where we have our membership meetings. Uh, when we have our board meetings, we'll be over in what we call the EOC or the boardroom, but membership meetings will be held in here. Other than that, it's weddings, birthday parties. You know, we rent it out. Everything's handled online at our website. Okay. Um, they can reserve it. They can pay for it. Everything online. Okay. Very little uh, involvement there as far as uh, Basically, all we have to do is open it and close the door. This is absolutely beautiful. What's the uh, You go to www.lafayettefire.com. On the left-hand side, there's a choice for hall rentals. Once you click in there, it shows you pictures. It gives you detailed information and what the costs are. You can look at the calendar to see if it's available. And if you're ready to book, you can just click book now and you can put a deposit down and it'll be handled. That's awesome. So is that also the same place that new volunteers would wanna uh, go to to start the process of becoming a volunteer? Yes, the same website, www.lafayettefire.com on the left-hand side. I think there's a recruitment button or a, a, a join us join us now okay. type of a button. And uh, once, you, once you select that, there's a short video that plays. And there's also, we have a website that's called joinlafayettefire.com and basically gives you an overview and if you can click on there I get an email that's sent directly to me on under the contact us we're always looking for members whether we're looking for firefighters administrative I mean we need people who know about um, to be our treasurer for example for the financial end of it we need junior firefighters that's the best time to start get to get well, how the young can involved. they be for junior firefighters uh, state of Pennsylvania 14 years of age okay is a junior firefighter minimum requirement okay so if you guys are watching this and you guys are on that younger side these are the kind of companies that you need to get a hold of to start either your career or just volunteering and helping back in your community. So when, when you do join up, I mean, we provide all the training, we provide all the gear, we bring you on board, we teach you everything that you need to do to be a firefighter. That's awesome. Okay, what else do we got? We're gonna go back this way, the way we came. All right. And I noticed you got a pretty good crew around the table. Do you want to go and introduce us to the, some of the guys? Sure, we can do that. Um, today they knew that Heroes Next Door was coming to town, so they, they came here to offer their assistance. All right. Plus, we're also staffing the fire trucks today. Okay. So if we get a call and we all have to leave on you, you never can uh, plan a fire call. Yeah, well, hopefully we do get a call. Many times we uh, you know go to a station and it's the, the slowest day of the year for them. So you know getting the calls is pretty good. Do you mind us going around the table and introducing everybody? All right, I'm Ryan Whispoon. I'm a lieutenant here in one of the livings, one of the first livings here in Lafayette. Um, Roger Newitz, owner, firefighter EMT. I live in the neighborhood. Nick right here, uh, vice president, with the firefighter. Derek Bethlehem, senior firefighter. Brandon Bowen, junior firefighter EMT. Nicholas Sott, duty crew, firefighter EMT. 
Well, thank you for your service, guys. We appreciate you opening your doors and showing us what you got here. So um, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about your live-in program in just a little bit. So you have the two live-ins already here today, right? Yep. Awesome. So we're going to be asking you a bunch of questions because that's kind of a new up and coming thing back into Pennsylvania. One of the things that's been you know, hurting us is the lack of volunteers and how can we reach out and how can we get these truck staff and the live-in programs is really making a comeback. So I'm going to be uh, quizzing you guys and seeing how that works. All right. All right, Chief, where would you like to do next? So we're going to, I'm going to switch gears here, and, and Ryan Wispel, or Lieutenant Wispel, he's going to take you um, to the second floor. Okay, sounds good. So this is just the steps from the day room downstairs. Yes. This is almost more a crew room, right? Yep. yep. So downstairs is kind of more of like our business side of the house. Mainly people show up, um, you know, if we're doing like trainings and stuff like that. It's kind of like an assembly area. Up here, it's more of like the relaxed kind of area. Um, I did mention before we have two live-ins, and we also, before we even started that program, we have um, we had a bunk-in program. Okay, dude, this is awesome. So you got a bunch of couches set up, yep. you got your TV, power gaming system. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have another one of those tables that was also built by uh, two of our members. Dude, that is absolutely gorgeous. I wish I had that kind of skill. So in here, um, for our line officers, this is kind of just like an office that's designated for them when we have our meetings. Obviously, like every fire department, you have like a board meeting, you have your membership meeting, and the line officers meeting. Um, this is just more of like a private area for us to also solve the world's problems and uh, figure out what's going on on the operational side sure. of things. I love the fact that you guys put your schematics of your trucks up here. Yep. So I see you have Pierce as your uh, That's our main primary. Primary? Yep. And then Ford for our smaller vehicles. Right, right. Are you going through Glick with that? I know they're one of the local. Yes, and it's actually nice because, I, I mean, Lancaster County in general, you're, it's kind of nice. You're close to most of the main um, manufacturers or their upfitting facilities. So Glick is literally right down the road from us, just one first due over. So right. um, it's pretty nice for us. Like I mentioned before, so we have both a male and female bunk room. The female bunk room, however, we don't really have many active female firefighters, so it's kind of like a catch-all for like extra equipment. A little bit of gym equipment in here that people can use. Okay. Um, our guys that do like to work out usually do like a lot of CrossFit related stuff with the fire gear, ropes, and just carrying like hose packs that we've made up for that purpose. Sure, and um, then you can go down in the engine bay. You can go yeah. out a nice warm day, unlike yep, today. Yep. You can go outside <laughs> and do a lot of that CrossFit stuff. Um, and then this was actually donated from a neighbor behind the firehouse because this is not like our really our primary bunk room it was nice they gave us actually a double decker bunk bed and okay. we made this our just makeshift female bunk room for now obviously if there's more interest we will kind of ramp it up a little bit and then inside right. there's a, a shower and a bathroom for them as well. okay so it's almost a private little area yep. for them. that's yep. awesome and i'm not sure if you guys saw yet when we were we go down uh, to the downstairs area we'll mention uh, the host tower but we have access to the host tower from up here okay so what we'll do is we um we have our fire hose like after a call that's all soaking wet. We've already washed it off. We can hang that or we can hang gear on this crane. Okay. And then it's the whole purpose is using the sunlight to help dry it. And then obviously the water will drain down into the drain down below. Um, Many times I've seen the hose things that they kind of wrap up and down yep. and around and they, they have it in the engine bay. This is a really good way to dry the hose because a hundred foot hose, It'll you're literally just, reach one loop and it's just, and dangling, just yep. dangling perfectly. Uh, we also can use this for uh, repelling uh, we usually go up to this top deck here and we will practice when we have people in like their level three harnesses and then we'll do okay. uh, repelling and we do like victim removal out of a well is like a drill we'll do it with this as well. You can set everything up up top and then we can simulate pulling the dummy up and stuff like that. We do that usually about once or it's twice a year. It's almost like a mini training center. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> and as we come out of here, we have a couple more rooms going down this way. Um, we have a small library. So this live-in program we have is, is just getting off its feet. So eventually the plan was to have like two nice computers in there to be a spot for people to study, especially if they're a, a local student. We actually have two colleges nearby. We have Thaddeus Stevens and uh, Hack okay. that have brought people to us before. Yeah, um, I get a lot of paramedic students and stuff that come from Hack. From so. Hack, yeah, yep. it's a good school. And then in here we have a storage room. It's, it's usually just where we keep like documents and stuff like that. Okay. So then we also have like a chore board here for our live-ins. Um, it's it's kind of very minimal. The nice thing about it is a lot of our members still help out with the cleaning, um, but usually that is the role of live-ins is to keep the house tidy and, and uh, keep everything in working order. So we sure. we take care of like the engine bay floor, the gear room, the day room, the museum, and then like obviously all the chores upstairs, downstairs, lounge, right. the kitchen, stuff like that. This is a good way to you know kind of organize, make sure everything is squared away. Mm -hmm. you, everybody can see it and they're like, oh, it's my duty. Yep. You know, we'll take care of it. Yep. And this is the major bunk room, right? Yes. This is absolutely huge. So, like I said before, with when we had our bunk-in program, originally this room had 
eight bunks that were all oriented on the outskirts of the room and they had like a semi partition like what they have now. Okay. Um, and then when the decision was made that we wanted to take a little bit of a further step in order to have private rooms, you have to do a full renovation. So we have four that we made to uh, be in compliance I mean, with the building code. You yeah. have to have that little bit of a gap. Right, because it's the fire um, sprinkler system that you have to yes. be aware of because you have the drop ceiling, you have to do that. Yep. That's a good, good way to kind of work through it and mm -hmm. still be compliant. Yep. What this reminds me of when I first walked in was, uh, you, you know, emergency, the old uh, yeah. you know, engine 51. Yep. That's the kind of same kind of bunk kind of, that you kind of same have. setup, yep. So do you guys have a fire pool from the second floor? Or we do don't, have, unfortunately. You don't. Okay. Um, We'll have a firefighter right near here talk a little bit more just about like the rooms and the setup and stuff like that. So before we get started, tell me your name one more time. Uh, Nick Rainier, I'm a vice president and uh, the living firefighter here at oh. Lafayette Fire Company. Okay, so this is this is your home? Yep, this is my home right here. I guess what kind of got me interested in here is, um, you know, I've always wanted to be a living somewhere, so figured and come back to the place where I started at, because I actually started here when I was 14, then moved over uh, up north a little bit. And then when they came back with the duty crew program and the living program, I was like, gave it a shot. So now I live here full time. How long you've been in the living program? Uh, about nine months. Okay. So how are you liking it so far? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. What yeah. are some of the benefits of doing a living program for uh, a fire company free, for, for yourself? Yeah, free rent. So saves money. Okay. Um, you know, you get to get the experience of, you know, being on the first truck every single time. Uh, as well as you know, helping your community, and it's just the big like with Ryan here being a lieutenant and me being a vice president. Um, it's just it's great to do that because then we're in roles of the department that we live at, so we help make decisions, whether it's on the fire side or the administrative side. Right. So that's you know kind of a step up from where we were back when we started. Okay. So, so these kind of remind me of dorm kind of living. Is that yep. kind of what the feel that you get? Yeah, it kind of is. I mean, you, you know, we share a bathroom here. Okay. Uh, so we'll come in here. So we actually here, you have your uh, shelving so you can store some stuff here. So, you know, we have our bins where we just put our stuff in our cleaning stuff here. Right. And then we'll come in here. And then, you know, you have the bathroom here. Oh, big bathroom, okay. Yeah, nice bathroom. Uh, two sinks, two showers, you know, enough that two guys, if we ha ever had four living uh, members, you know, two guys would share a shower and then they would have the responsibility of cleaning that as well as, you know, the toilet and sure. everything else. Everything so. that goes along with your own home. Yep, yep, your own home, <laughs> yep. And then, you know, we're also in charge of, you know, keeping it nice and clean, uh, vacuuming the carpets and stuff. Like I said, you know, the stuff that you do at your uh, own home. So this is not necessarily a new building. You guys have been here for how long now? Uh, about 11 years. But it looks brand new. Yeah, yep. I mean, that's a testament to how well mm -hmm. you guys are keeping up with yep. your stuff. Yeah, we're very, um, I, I know Ryan and I were very neat and we want to keep things organized and, you know, keep it clean and making sure that when people come in, they come into a clean environment instead of it being smelly or trashed up and, you know. Okay. Especially when we have guests. Take a look at one yeah, of the sure. Bars. Yeah, we can actually take a couple look at it. So this one uh, is Lieutenant Whispools. So okay. this uh, is his home. Um, we can actually go in here. All right. So. Of course, you get a bed, you get a nightstand, uh, you have your dresser, and then, you know, of course, he has his pictures on, uh, on his walls and stuff, and, you know, he has his own little projector, so he has a, he doesn't really have a TV, so he has a projector that actually, you know, puts it on the wall right here, so. That's pretty cool, that's a good way to do that. Yeah, and then down here at this next one in here, this is, this is what would be a bare bone one. Um, so this is what you'd get when you would move in, you get your, they provide a lamp, again, a bed, pillows, all types of stuff, and then right. you can organize it to how you want it. Yeah. So how you can move the bed around, whatever whatever works for you when you uh, move in. Right. So and then you can put up your own pictures. Yep, you can you put want. up your own pictures and everything. So we'll now, take. Do you guys supply uh, the things like it, the electricity? Do they yep. have to pay anything? Uh, no. Nope. All you do is uh, the requirements are 40 hours a week, and uh, you run the fire calls when you're here. Okay. And you have to have a full time job or be in college. Okay. So that's just another thing. Um, you know, they just want you to have pretty much you're an adult and you have your responsibilities, but they just give you a place to stay and do your homework and stuff at if you feel like you're in college or something. Right. Uh, we do get a lot of interest from people that. Um, you know, go to college because it's free living instead of paying for a dorm. Sure. So yeah, that's a good way to do it off campus because yeah. the, the colleges aren't too far away. If I look. No, they're right. they're about uh, Hack and uh, Thaddy Stevens are probably about two to five minutes from here. Okay. So and then each living gets their own uh, wardrobe here. Okay. So 
another storage place that you can put all of your stuff in. Right. Um, so even though no. the, the room itself is small, that gives you your privacy, you still yep. have plenty of room to put all your clothes. And yep, your exactly, and exactly. And all your personal So, belongings. And then in here will be our laundry room. Uh, excuse the mess, you know, we're, we're doing some renovations okay. in here. You know, we haven't, um, we just got this hooked up a while ago and now we're putting up a wall to separate the two rooms and everything. So, you know, we have our own washer and dryer. We were already using the one in the engine bay, but now instead of us walking across the engine bay to the other side of the building, we can do it right here. Right. Where it's actually more and it helps convenient. With your own personal clothes rather than throwing it in with a bunch of fire gear. Yeah. You know, you well, we actually we actually did have two separate ones, one okay. for because uh, the guys who sleep here on the weekends, they're required to wash their beddings when they're done sleeping here. So we just all shared one uh, washer and dryer, and then we had one for our gear. Okay. So okay. Uh, if you come over here, we have four spots for guys to bunk in overnight or for the weekend. We do allow guys to stay here three nights, and then they have to take a break 48 hours away from the firehouse of sleeping here. Okay. Doesn't mean they can't be here to staff during the daytime, it's just they can't sleep here. Uh, for 48 hours and that way it gives everybody else a chance it gives to a chance and it, it's yeah. that safety feature too yep you know, exactly you, not only physically you need to mm -hmm. take that kind of break but mentally there's times where you yep. gotta take that break I yeah mean, exactly. i just got off a shift that i do 24 hour shifts mm -hmm. and we ran our butts off you yeah know, in yeah. 24 <laughs> hours you know for me running 12 13 calls <laughs> yeah in, in 24 hours was a pretty busy shift yeah i mean sometimes we like in the middle of the night time uh with ron and i you know we could run seven last weekend we had seven calls between saturday night and sunday morning right so uh i mean it just it varies so um and then if we come down here okay. my room here all you know right. set up with all all my stuff like i have my calendar you know my pictures my clock my tv and then you know of course the bed and you know you just it's your own it's your own personal space in the firehouse that you can have right so i love all the shields that you have on the yeah wall, thanks the departments that you work with yeah and volunteer for now, do you also pay for cable or uh, any of the utilities? This is no, covered everything, by the way. Yeah, everything, everything's covered. Like I said, all you have to do is meet your requirements, which is the 40 hours a week. And um, you just run the fire calls when you're here. Okay. And you know you keep up with the chores and everything, and but I mean it's literally cost this is of living. An awesome way to, to you know bring in those volunteers, bring in those people that you know might be thinking, hey, maybe mm -hmm. I want to do this a career, maybe I don't. I'm yeah. not quite sure. You know, have them do that opportunity to get them in. Exactly, really their... exactly. And you know, like I said, you know, we uh, we're looking for two more livings, so we have two spots available. If anybody's interested in you know wanting to join, they can always stop in and on a Monday that night. Website that they have to go to uh, WW Lafayette Fire com and there's a tab there for them uh where they can just stop up on a monday night and we're always here um okay. we can give them a tour um is monday so nights forth. your training night yep monday nights are training night and okay. our meeting nights so and of course then you know ryan and i are here are different nights of the week too uh we have our they have the line officers meeting the first wednesday of the month and we have our board meeting the last one uh last monday of the month so again there's there's opportunities for people to stop in uh other than mondays so awesome awesome is there anything else up on the second floor here? Uh, nope, this is it. Okay, so, so the next thing we need to do is go down to the, the engine bay. Yes, right. the apparatus bay. But before we do that, do us a favor, hit subscribe, hit notification so we can keep bringing you more. Uh, we're gonna go down to the apparatus bay, so stay tuned. Let's go see what they have. We're working our way down into the engine bay here. Um, this engine bay is absolutely huge. Yep. So. I think our chief touched on the grant that we were awarded. Um, a huge portion of this building was uh, constructed by High Steel, which is actually in our first two run district, right across the way. They have a huge um, metal work, like fabrication facility there, where they build like all sorts of you know girders and the, the metal structures that go out to like huge buildings such as this. Okay. Okay. Um, so they were a huge contributing factor, and they're a very large donor to us as well. And we're really, really thankful for everything they do for us. Um, then we work our way around so it's a nice big open area with all of our apparatus here. It's great when usually they're pull through bays, but it also provides extra storage for uh, other apparatus and stuff like that. Okay, so what's the first truck we run into here? So this one here, this is our Squad 63-2. In, in Lancaster County, we consider a squad is more like the uh, the manpower, like utility vehicle okay. of that nature. This one is more for fire police and traffic control and also will move people around. Right. Um, if they're like a late responder for a call. Okay. 
Um, Do you know the year of that one? Yes, this one's a 1990 Ford F-350 diesel. Everything we have here is all diesel. Yeah, that looks brand new for a 1990. If, I, if my memory serves me right, I believe this still has like 49,000 miles on it. <laughs> That's still awesome. Yeah, it's how, pretty much broken in. So. How much new one here? This one looks fairly new. This one's a 2016 Ford F-550 diesel, and this is like, um, it's our squad 63-1. Okay. Um, we do run some medical assist related calls like um, for cardiac arrests and it, like most fire departments do, we go to CPR and like um, lifting calls. Okay. Um, and this is actually fairly busy. This area for some weird, weird so reason is- So are, are you guys AEMTs? Are you EMTs, paramedics? What do you guys run? So everyone here is does the first aid CPR training. It's a requirement to be here. And then we do have a handful of our guys who are either EMR. I know that's, it's not a very common certification. And then we have a couple guys that are EMTs. Okay. So okay. we predominantly try to front load those guys for those types of calls and now this doesn't have any pump or anything on it no this is strictly uh, we used to have three engines at this house okay and when that third engine was sold we kind of collected a lot of like the hand tools and like basic engine company tools on this piece of apparatus but it also is prim primarily like a secondary for vehicle accidents okay so that's traffic control capabilities and um, if our primary uh, engine that goes to MVAs is out of service. We can put the tools on this and run it. It's like a awesome. Person, so. Looks like you got a nicer, uh, older one here too, right? So this is a uh, for a while, actually up until um, two years ago. This was still in frontline service. Okay. 1978 Max CF. <laughs> this is gorgeous. And it used to be open cab. It got refurbed in 1992. Uh, okay. To receive its enclosed cab and. Uh, this wasn't like not necessarily our front out structure engine, but it was for like brush fires and it assisted like car fires and stuff like that. And obviously it would go second or third due for um, for fires and, right. and, uh, and stuff like that. This is definitely a testament unto what firefighters care for their vehicles. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys spend a lot of time, a lot of effort to make sure that these things run well, they look good, they're stocked well, absolutely beautiful. And it still, it still pumps and runs like a charm. So. Yeah, all right. You got uh, two trailers here. What are yeah. the trailers for? This one here, our, our um, neighbors across the street, Langstry MS, they, they're just housing a, a shower trailer here. They, uh, they have a program called Community Paramedics where they go out and they um, will place this trailer in communities of need where um, the homeless community can come out, get a shower, get medical checkups and stuff like that. It's, a, it's kind of a nice program. So they, yeah. they store it here, they come pick it up with their utility truck and okay. drive it out to Lake That's That's thinking outside the box. All too often we think of, you know, we just do 911 responses, mm -hmm. uh, but they're doing a community paramedicine program that, you know, really affects the community. Mm -hmm. So someone that may be living on the streets that doesn't have a home, hasn't had a shower, you know, they got to find their way. That's an awesome thing to do. Mm -hmm. This trailer, um, Kind of has a unique backstory. So Lancaster County has a foam task force. It's kind of been like in a, kind of like a dormant stage right now. Um, for a while it was a couple main departments, like the, the two paid departments, Manheim Township and the city and us. Okay. Um, and there was a brief period of time where those departments kind of took a step back and it was mainly us that primarily had the, the foam task force role. Okay. Um, it rarely ever gets a, uh, Utilized. We had a fire not long ago at Tanger Outlets where we had to use it, and it, I remember it's, that. It's usually for when the fire is hard to reach, and you need to use like high expansion foam and stuff like that to really snuff out the fire. Right, right. Um, so, we so this doesn't have a pump on it. You would actually hook up to it and use the master stream, yes. and and go from there. And we also have fans and stuff for people who aren't aware of like how foam works. You have to have like a, an, an air aerator. Source. Yep. Yeah, an aerator. Okay. Um, Primarily before this trailer is our primary like this foam unit now, but it used to be this uh, the Mac pumper had an entire cutout in the back that was strictly just foam buckets. Okay. So like if we had like an aircraft emergency or something like that, this could potentially be pulled for that or like a factory fire of that nature, stuff like that they can go for. So. That, this is awesome. All right, and then next to us is another truck. Yeah. This is a mid-mount tower of some sort, right? So this is a 2007 uh, Pierce Quantum 95-foot mid-mount tower ladder. This is like our flagship um, piece of apparatus. So. This is the one I think I caught on on the Facebook page where I was like, yeah. dude, this is pretty cool to see. <laughs> <laughs> so, like every, so uh, East Lampier Township has four departments and each department kind of specializes in what their, um, their primary job is. So for us, we have the truck company we do like the high angle rescue, the ventilation, like the on house fires and stuff like that. Um, the other company, Ronks, they have a heavy rescue. They primarily do like a lot of the heavy extrication. And then both Bird in Hand and Whitmer, which is to the north, they have um, heavy water with like tankers or engine tankers and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but this truck here holds six personnel. Um, this will take us to our away game calls. Uh, we have mutual aid responsibilities with Lancaster City when they hit um, a certain 
number of bells on a uh, structure fire. Okay. And I'm going to stop it for just a second. I see some other guys that were, you know, hiding from us. Come back in here, guys. <laughs> you can all be part of this. This is your, this is your guys' house too. So. <laughs> so this is a 2021 Pearson Forcer. It is a pumper. Okay. About how many gallons of water does it carry? That's 500 gallons of water, and it's a 2,000 gallon minute pump. Okay. Is this your primary unit that you would use? This is our primary suspension piece. Yes. Okay. Okay. And how many does it carry? It holds six personnel. Okay. And you're a firefighter here. And uh, EMT? Duty, duty crew, volunteer, firefighter, EMT. Okay. And what's the next engine we have here? This is engine 63-1. Um, it is a 2003 Pierce Dash, um, last of its kind. Um, it is kind of half and half, so it is rescue. It has some rescue equipment on it, and it is a pump room. Okay. So the rescue is used for vehicle accidents, stuff like that. <clears throat> and then... For the fire side, we do have fire equipment, so it kind of like multitask and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's good to have, because I heard you, you know your neighbors are the heavy rescue guys, yes. but you guys are gonna show up on scene much quicker than those heavy rescues. So getting to work, maybe pulling out your hearse tool or something like that uh, is gonna be key uh, for anything. Or if it's just something minor, like we just need a pop a door or something like that, we, we don't need to call outside resources within our first two. Okay, that makes sense. Who is your primary EMS unit? You guys yeah. don't run an ambulance out of we here, have right? Lancaster EMS. They okay. Are one of the largest EMS providers here in Lancaster County. Okay. They have East San Pedro Township. They're right across the street from us. Actually. Okay. And they're ALS and BLS service yes. for you? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Where's your closest hospital? Right down the street. Okay. Hospital, you got Lancaster General Hospital. Okay. Which is level two trauma center, I believe, level right? One. Level one now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Your trucks are absolutely beautiful. Yes. So, what do you guys think of the orange? You know, that's, it, it, I can't get away from, you know, the color. What do you guys think of it? Well, we, we think it's a unique. Um, here in Lancaster County, we're the only department that has orange. Okay. Um, it, it gives you that yeah. sense of pride. It's yeah. that unique thing. I come from a firehouse that has Smurf blue, and that, that's very prideful for us because it's not the normal red and white fire trucks. It's nice to have different colored fire trucks, and, you know, it's, it's unique out there. Uh, it's something that really catches the eye. And the other thing is, is when you're on a roadway, you're gonna see this one, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I guess for us, it's it's unique because, like, like you said, like some departments have a, um, they have like a mascot, they have like a symbol, or they have like like an animal, whether it's a character. Like, yeah, like a, a Tasmanian devil, exactly. like a pirate, or whatever. For us, it's the color, and you know, and it and it happened by accident, and we roll with it, and that's what that, that's what makes it cool. I, I remember when I first came here there. They're like, yeah, they're orange. They have orange trucks. And I was like, I don't think I've ever seen an orange fire truck before, at least in this general area. Right, right. That's what makes it kind of cool. So if you guys are watching and you have orange fire trucks, let us know. Drop a comment below. Give us a picture of it, because we'd like to see some more of these orange fire trucks. And we're almost at the end of your engine bay, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I noticed that this is all the new NFPA regulations of removing the gear yeah. from inside the engine bay. You have a separate bay for that. Yes. And it has like ventilation and stuff like that in place to help try to air everything out. We have a policy for the cancer prevention side of things. We don't bring any fire gear anywhere over to the admin side of the building that we started at. Um, everything will stay in here after, after fires. Everyone is strongly encouraged to wash their gear as soon as they can. Okay. Um, yeah, a nice big place for it. You got plenty of racks. Yep. You got some racks for more volunteers. Yep. I can see that. Yep. So if I come in the front main entrance there off of 30, yep. I would come in, pull on the side, come in through the side door, yes. drop, drop my gear, and then get on the truck. Yep. Is that correct? Yes. So that, actually, that's how the trucks are oriented. We've kind of noticed over time, like they're oriented in the order of that, what is most commonly dispatched. Okay. Um, so like vehicle accidents is one of our heavy hitters around here. So the rescue engines oriented is the first one. And then the structure piece for fire alarms and fires. Right. Uh, this door actually is, it's pretty nice. The system, uh, the building has a pretty new system in terms of like the keyless entry. So when we have a call, um, the door should unlock with the tone dispatch. Okay. Everyone can run in. And so if they're running out of their car, they're having a hard time grabbing their keys or whatnot, they're not struggling at the door. They just come right in and get their gear on. Right. And then I think after, sometime after the second dispatch, if you get second dispatch, that door will relock. So it keeps the, you know, the building secure. Okay. The One of the questions that's come up with us uh, for volunteer fire companies is, do you guys respond to the scene too? Do you have to respond to station? How do you guys work your stuff? So for us, we don't go to the scene, our, our fire police guys can. Okay. Excuse me, they can because um, that is primarily their role is to help direct traffic around a scene. Um, we like to focus most of our personnel coming in to staff the apparatus. For us, that's one of the more important uh, factors for when we respond to calls. So 
everyone is highly encouraged to use their, uh, we have a mobile app that we use, I'm responding, so everyone will check up, and sometimes that is the determining factor for the officer in the piece. Okay. Who's going on what truck? Am I leaving now? Am I waiting for more people? Okay. And that goes on. What's the minimum crew that you would have to roll out the we door like with? We have to roll with at least four qualified personnel. Okay. And, and the nice thing is, is at all hours of the day, we're usually able to, to uh, achieve that. That's so, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, that's really nice. And then everyone, obviously, like we said, they come in, they get the gear on. We have a, right. a mixed match of, especially with the funks here. We okay. We follow the level system in terms of our, our rank and who's who's qualified on what. Okay, I noticed you got a couple different gear colors too, is that? We're going through a, a change out phase where we're transitioning okay. into black and orange. Transition, okay, all right. I think it's like three sets of gear at a time. So. so as we're walking around, I noticed that you have orange helmets. I think that's the first time we've seen that. White are usually Chiefs, right? Is yes. that still, yep. still cop? Yep. We have blue for EMS, okay. black for firefighters, Yellow for engineers, I think. Okay. Uh, what do you guys run? Anything so, specific? Well, we actually have a cool backstory with the orange. So currently, orange helmets are juniors. Um, it okay. Stand out. You know that they're in it. You know they're either a minor or they're you know they're in an ex exterior role. Um, like probably like two decades ago, an orange helmet here was actually an officer. Um, instead of like usually in this general area of the county, red helmets is associated with a lieutenant and a captain. Okay. We ran an orange helmet. And then um, also with our front system, so a lot of companies like to hold to that. You have like a lighter color as your rookie, you have the black as like your interior, and then red as like your truck front. For us, also because we're orange, our senior level is an orange front. Okay. Um, so we start off, if you're brand new, you have no street experience, you start off with a blank until you've knocked out your basic stuff, like your first aid, your okay. hazmat operations. So you're talking the shield. So you have a yes. yellow shield yes. versus a black shield versus the red shield. Yes. Okay. For us, we have like a blank as somebody who's brand new. Um, once they've gotten like minimum sign off, so they're qualified to be an exterior firefighter with us, they get a yellow front. Okay. I'm trying to see if we have one. In uh, right to your right. There's a um, so this yellow. Is, well, then we have juniors as well. Okay. So, um, like over here we have, this would be a yellow front. Oh, okay. Once they've achieved through their um, essentials program, the fire academy, they'll go and they'll get their black front, which is interior. Then their senior front, which is more truck oriented. They get their orange and then um, officers like once you kind of reach that level, you can get a custom. That's like the incentive visor there. You can, yeah. You can have a custom front, custom helmet. Okay. Um, and then that also signifies the rank of the individual as well. And then obviously Ooh. chiefs are white, lieutenants and captains are red. Right. And then um, some of our past um, officers also hold the orange underneath the helmet. Okay. To signify their, their yeah. role from the years prior. Yeah. So coming out of the, the other exit of the gear room here, we have, I mentioned the foam task, which we were a part of. Um, like I said, it's kind of like in a dormant phase right now. It's out of service currently, but we have a room here for storage for the foam. And okay. We have a large kind of outdoor maintenance shop for our like lawn equipment. Mm -hmm. And we also have- Mind if I open it up? Absolutely. All right. For people who want to do like forceful entry and stuff, this is a house made room where our members made it. Okay. Um, and then we have like a hopper for like a absorbent that we refill our buckets for calls and then just other basic storage. And it, like uh, it's almost a pull through, so you can get the tractor in and out yep. and don't worry exactly. about that. Yep. Now, because you guys live here, one of the things that I do, I do a lot of maintenance on my own vehicles. Do they allow you to maybe use the garage for do some um, maintenance? Every once in a while. Like sometimes. oil, basic oil changes and brakes and stuff like that? Yeah, and then and, other, and sometimes people will wash their vehicle and stuff like that. Okay. Um, you know, especially like during the winter time and you know, you don't wanna. Let that salt get on and rust at all. Exactly. So, yeah. I noticed you got a training board up here. As, um, <laughs> the one thing that caught my eye was the Teslas. Mm -hmm. One of the questions that's been coming about on our channel is, you know, how are you guys fighting these kind of fires? They burn hotter, they burn longer, and they almost, you can't put them out. Mm -hmm. Have you guys come up with a, a way to do that yet? So we haven't actually had many experiences with Teslas in particular yet. Uh, we've had plenty of our guys go and take um, awareness courses and like classes that, that are teaching tactics on how to, to fight the electric vehicle fire. Um, we have on our apparatus, we'll have like combustible metals extinguishers. We have obviously the foam. Um, it's, it's definitely a challenge, but I, I believe with, with the training that a lot of our guys have went out and, and received uh, right. ready for it, we just don't wish it on anybody, obviously, and uh, it's definitely, it poses a challenge, even in the extrication side of stuff, you know, yeah. you, you want to use a hydraulic tools on a car that's all smashed up and you have high voltage wires in there. So like, yeah, because, yeah. You know, what are the answers? It's definitely that? changing the way we do uh, firefighting and rescue and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, because it's not just Tesla. You know, Tesla is the, the leading guy, but you know, every manufacturer is coming out with these electric vehicles mm -hmm. and those battery packs and stuff like that. It's a totally different game mm -hmm. than when we're talking about fighting fires or doing, like you said, extrication. Mm -hmm. 
So back in the day, my biggest thing was Volvos. Volvos were very yeah. difficult to cut into, you know, <laughs> and how we get these doors open, because they're the little tanks, mm -hmm. and now we got a new challenge, so, right. which, which is good. So what's over here? So we have uh, we have a little laundry room here. So like okay. before we, we install the one for the livings here, we have, um, we have a gear washer. Okay. We have a, a washer that's like for more like people who have bedding and stuff, those who come in and do their little shifts as volunteers, duty crew out of town and stuff like that. Okay. Um, we have a cascade system, which is kind of nice. So some stations don't have the luxury of being able to refill their air cylinders on site. We do. Okay. Um, and then we also have um, a washing station for SCBA face pieces after a fire. We're big on like the cancer prevention. Yeah. Make sure you you know you're not putting a dirty face piece back on after, after a call. Right. Right. Um, just try to cut down the risk of carcinogens. Uh, oh. And then a maintenance room. Yes. And in here, we do a lot. We try to strive to do a lot of our. Our maintenance on our equipment. Oh, it's bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yep. So okay. It kind of wraps around. And we just, everything is really nice, neat, like organized, labeled. One of our members went and put a ton of time into labeling everything, including on apparatus. Right. We're just big on that. I know some some stations are big on like, oh, you should know where that pool is. You should know where that is. You know. I get that, and yeah. a lot of times when it's the the paid departments that you're there all the time, yes. I, I can understand it a little bit. Maybe your ship, you're you're going through multiple trucks, mm -hmm. you know, because they break down and you're running it. But for the volunteer services, you're not, always here. you're not always here. You may have a new member coming in. You may have a junior member or something like that that maybe only makes four or five calls a month, maybe makes a half a dozen calls a month. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that having a label is really, really important. Exactly. We went up to a thing near Lehigh County. They labeled everything too. And yep. they didn't just do the sticky labels. They did the, uh, like engraved, the engraved things. Stuff, yep. Absolutely beautiful. Good way to do that for volunteers. And it makes it great on a call. Like, like you said, if there's somebody who's not necessarily always available, for the everyday call and it's their day to show up. Right. Um, you ask them to run and grab something, you tell them the compartment, bam, the label's right there, they can grab it off. And it just it just makes everything a lot more streamlined, a lot smoother, and right. it just works out better for us. Makes yeah. it easier for training and everything. Yep. So thank you very much. I don't know where the chief went. Uh, come on in here, guys. We're going to say thank you to you guys, too, for allowing us to come around. So what was your name one more time? Brandon. All right. And Nick. Nick. So thank you so much for showing us around. This is an absolutely beautiful house. If you had the opportunity to tell those viewers, you know, what it's about here and how to get involved, how would they, what would you tell them? So for us, um, every Monday night, there's always guaranteed to have people here. That's when we do our apparatus maintenance. We do our trainings around 6 p.m. You can come up, get an application, get a tour. Um, you can find us on the website. That's uh, www.lafayettefire.com. And then also, if you're interested in like, the live-in program, you can also come in Monday night or contact the station um, on the website, whether it's through website, through the phone, um, and there will always be people here. All right, thank you very much. Yep, thank you. So this is the crew from Lafayette Fire Company in Lancaster County, PA. Thank you all for watching, but before we end, you gotta hit that subscribe, hit that notification, keep smashing those like buttons so we can keep bringing you more. We'll see you again next week, all over the country. Nope, I wanna do that again. Yep. Today we are in Lancaster County, in Pennsylvania, just next door to my Chester County, which is where I work. work yeah. Ah. Come on, Mike. Come I got on. it. <laughs> we don't want to spend too much time out here. Yep, yep.